Hi, I'm going to do a quick demo here on how to set up a Megatree setup on Vixen 3. The version I'm using here is an unreleased test build, but you should be seeing it sometime in the summer of 2016, and you will get a chance to see some of the new features we've been working on in this video. So I'm going to get started by setting up the display. I'm going to hit the Setup Display button here, and then I'm going to add an object. The first object I'm going to add is a mega tree. Pretty simple. I'm going to click the plus over here. This is going to be my mega tree. I'm going to give this 32 strings. It's going to be a pixel string, and it's going to have 50 pixels per string. I'll click OK, and then I see that I get a mega tree over here. If I expand this object, I'm going to see that I get mega tree S1, S2, S3. Those represent the strings. There's 32 strings in this tree. And if I were to expand any one of these groups, I'll see that I have 50 pixels in that group. You'll note that the little ball here is gray, meaning that it's unconnected and it has no properties at this time. Now, I'm also going to add a couple more things here just to make this a little more interesting for setup. So, I'm going to put a star on top of my tree. And I'm going to use generic numbered group for this. And this is going to be mini tree... We're going to call this um, star uh, one, and we're going to give this, say, 25 items. Okay, and so we see star one with 25 items in it. I'm also going to add a couple more just to make it a little more interesting. This is going to be star two, and we'll give this guy 50 items. And I'm going to do one more, and this one is going to have 75 items, and will be star 3. I'm going to take all, I'm going to leave these just the way they are for right now, and I will move on. All of these items are going to be pixels, so I'm going to hold the shift key and select all of them, and I'm going to go down here to configure color handling. Now, the color handling is going to tell us how this element responds to color. So I'm going to hit this uh, configure button here, and I'm going to say they can be any color full RGB. Okay. Now it's telling me it added 1,750 color properties and configured 1750, and um, it skipped none, and it added filters, 1750 filters, 1750 configured. That corresponds with the number of pixels in this whole array. Now, I'm going to make note of this 1750 because this number is going to come into play a little bit later. Okay. Now that I've done that, I'm going to click OK, and I'm done with Setup Display. Now, I'm going to put this on a preview. We'll start a new preview here of the type Vixen Display Preview, and I found a bug. Okay. On this screen, the bug that I found, you should have seen some buttons here at the bottom, but this is a scaling bug. Nonetheless, I'm going to double click on this and it will add a new display preview. You'll notice that it opens up here down at the bottom. I'll bring this in where it centers a little better. And now I'm going to go down here and make sure that this is selected and I will click configure preview. Adding a mega tree is really easy. All we do over here on the left in the elements pane is click on the mega tree. Then we go up here for the smart object and find the mega tree item. And then we're going to click, hold down, and drag it into place. And you'll notice that this whole item here becomes pink. Uh, that indicates that it is the selected element currently. I'm going to go back to the select tool and when I select Mega Tree, that oh, they're all pink. That's the selected one. If I click away from it onto any other object, you'll see that it's just normal teal color. Teal color, as you see down here, indicates that it is linked. So all of the items here, I'll expand this so we can see the pane here. It is a pixel, and the links are already preset. Everything in here is all linked to those elements. And it did that just because it um, kind of knows how to map a standard configured mega tree to a mega tree smart object in the preview. So I don't need to worry about any of this. I'll click OK and we can adjust the light size if we wanted to make it heavier or dark or or we could change whether it's a 
360 degrees or a 90 degree tree or however we want that to work. I'll leave it all the way out. You'll see the string count is 32. That's because there's 32 groups in there and the lights per string is already 50. That's because each string already had 50 in it. We can adjust the height and um, or the width of the of the um, top of the tree here and that would kind of adjust for how big your topper section is. I like to keep mine pointy, especially in preview. And then you could adjust the base height, which kind of determines the angle at which the tree is, but I kind of like just that default is pretty good. I'll move this down a little bit so we can see what we're doing. And then I'm going to make a star. I'm going to take this star and select it here, and I'll select the star smart object, and I'm just going to click and drag a star into here. And I'm going to make another star. I click on the next one. My star object is still selected, and I'm going to make another star. Trying to make a three ring concentric star sort of thing. And I will do number three as well. My star is still selected, and I'll make yet a bigger one. Okay. I'm going to take my tree. Oops. You need, always need to click that select tool when you're done with the tool, otherwise, it'll keep trying to draw more. So you can change the rotation if you wanted to here. Um, because they always kind of come out funny for a five-pointed star, but um, I forget what the number is. Um, fifteen is relatively straight, so there we go. We got a fifteen. I'm going to put that star on top of the tree. I'll grab this other one. I'll rotate it the same fifteen degrees. And I'm going to put it inside of this star. And then I'll take this last one again to 15 degrees. And I will put it inside of this star. I'm going to shrink that down a little bit because it's a little big. And we're just going to do that. So there's my star. Now you'll also see that I got these three yellow dots. That's because... And this one up there, that's because I forgot to click back on the select tool while I still had an element selected and I drew these little tiny uh, other objects in there and they're kind of hidden behind, but I'm just going to ignore that for now. Now I'm going to hit the green check, save and close, and I have my mega tree in the preview. I'll click OK and my preview is configured here. And if I were to go to create a sequence, I could easily go up here and take an effect. Let's say I put a snowflake effect on my mega tree over here and I'm going to highlight this section and I'm going to press play and we will see uh, let me hit the actually I'll just hit this effect preview and then you'll see how they keep going on and on. You'll see how there are snowflakes running down my tree. If I wanted to put more snowflakes, I could do that over here. More snowflakes going down the tree. If I wanted to make them go faster, I can do that, and I could, I could watch it the whole time. If I wanted to light up my star, I can take, uh, let me put a spin on the outer one here. And I'm going to make this a blue spin, so I'll drag the blue onto there. And I'm going to take this intensity and make it just full out blue. Click OK. And let's uh, let's see what this looks like. Oh, it's you can barely see it there. I will take it now and instead of distribute evenly, I'm going to make it a percent of the revolution and make those pulse lengths a little wider. Now they're going to overlap a little more. Let's go back and see what it's doing. Now just see kind of how it's spinning around. I could take that same effect, pull down the control key, and move it down to the next element, into the next element. And if I wanted to, I could control, click all three of those, and I could right click on them and go to alignment, align start times and then I can click again align end times and now they're all the same length let's make the inside oops I had all three selected still 
So I'll make the outside red, the middle green, and the outer blue. Or I may have done that backwards. But I'm going to click my loop button. I've set my timeline marker from about the size of these effects here. And I'm going to hit the space. So you'll see that my stars are all spinning in their three colors. And I have snowflakes. This is 1,750 pixels working on a um, display here, doing a couple effects all at once here. And incidentally, this is on a machine that's about five years old and is a laptop, nothing, nothing fancy. That's pretty much the end of this video. I'm going to make a, another video here in a few moments that will illustrate how to take these elements and connect them to a Falcon controller. So stay tuned for the next video.